Sometimes I find myself wondering, what is it, truly, that makes something resonate so significantly with us? Maybe there's just no way to actually describe it. Call it an ineffable... Wait, what is that? What is following my mouse around? Are you serious? Oh, I can't believe it. Are you telling me that this whole time it was just a big blurry blob in the background? Oh, <laughs> well played, popper.com. Er, dot B. Well, you know why we're here. Since I like taking things one step at a time, I'm just gonna get something on the screen that I can see. Let's call it a blob and give it a color of white, a height of 500, and let's just make it a square at first. The very first thing I need my square to do is follow my mouse. So in layman's terms, it'd be something like, hey, Mr. Blob, get over here. You see this uh, GPS tracker I've attached to my mouse pointer here? I'm giving you the exact coordinates. So run along now, chop chop, okay. Now I want you, the one who's watching this video, to reflect on what just happened. We're obviously not done yet, we've barely even started, but what I want you to recognize is that in creating this crude version of our final product, we've demonstrated that even the complex things are just a collection of simple things that have been strung together. So if you find yourself in a situation where something seems too complex, remember that a good place to start is to ask yourself, what are the simple things it's made up of? All right. Why don't we center our square and round it into a circle? That's just two more things and we're already a lot closer. I can see that our blob needs to be multicolored. So I'm gonna go with a linear gradient from left to right, starting with green and ending with purple. Even when we're not moving the blob, it's clear there's some inherent motion. What if I create an animation that just rotates from zero degrees to 360 and then tell my blob to do that over the course of 20 seconds? There's still a glaring difference between our two blobs, and I think it has to do with the fact that the original doesn't snap to the mouse quite so instantaneously. We need ours to chill out and lag behind a bit. Fortunately, there exists a built-in API that makes this insanely easy. We can just swap out .style for .animate and pass in our two properties. Then we just have to tell it how long to take and not to reset the properties at the end. It feels like our blob is not only rotating, but also morphing its shape. So what if we just scale up the size at the halfway point of our animation? It still seems like there's something different. Oh yeah, why don't we go ahead and blur this thing? Let's see what happens when we apply a blur directly to the blob. Hmm, close, but I'm not a fan of the weird concentric circles I'm seeing as a byproduct. How about instead we try throwing in a second div that we'll call blur. We'll make it take up the whole screen and position it absolutely on top of the blob. With our new invisible layer, we can simply tell everything behind it to blur. At this point, all we're really missing is the super cool text effect we learned about in the last video.